I always name my my pieces. Um, this one in particular is it's called Fresh to Death, the image of a of a cow skull freshened up with with flowers. I try to keep my titles um, like a like a musician would name their their songs. I try to name my my pieces the same way. Gabriel Lucky, I'm from San Angelo, Texas, born in 1983. My real dad, um, my birth dad, great man, good guy, um, he was an artist himself. Uh, I, I can credit my art to him as far as um, talent goes, but I was raised from a, from a little baby from my stepfather who took me as his own. He and my mother are the ones that really pushed me to do art. I just remember them being so proud of little things that I did and and I'll never forget um, they, they bought me paper plates and those were my canvases and I would draw little landscapes on paper plates and and with crayons and map colors and and I'll never forget that I'll never forget my paper plates were my canvas and you know it is what they, they didn't that's what they knew that's all they knew about art and so I'll never forget creating those memories on paper plates My grandfather is like my first love of my life. Back in the 50s when he was doing his thing, um, there was still racism was, was crazy. Uh, they couldn't drink out of the same water fountains, you know, as other people. He is the first person in, in, in the history of America who paved the way for people like Richie Valens as far as Hispanics go. The Hispanics that did play music were playing Mexican music and whatnot, conjunto music mariachi music, but my grandpa, he went the rock and roll route. And he was talented, talented man. He, he wrote many songs, um, wrote songs for Eric Clampton, ABBA, um, and he, he's halfway credited for creating the double neck guitar. Having that in my family tree, I always knew that you could do something more than, you know, work your bones, you know, work your fingers to the bone. Greatest story ever. My girlfriend at the time was my wife now. We were living in Fort Worth, Texas. I got invited to a gallery in the Dallas Art District. And I was 23 years old and I, I, I remember saying, this is it, I'm gonna do it, this is it. It's the biggest thing that's ever hit, happened to me. But in the meantime, we had just had a baby and we sometimes didn't have formula for this kid. I mean, it was unbelievable how poor we were. It, it was just rough times. She was arguing with me about painting and I was contemplating stopping painting because I couldn't afford it. I couldn't afford my own paint supply. I don't know what happened exactly, but Kim said, you know what, Let, like, I'm gonna invite some friends over and we're just gonna have a few drinks. A mutual friend of ours invited a friend and he happened to be a doctor. Mind you, we were behind on our rent. Car payment, barely had formula to feed my, my oldest boy. It's crazy, we're having, we have music going, we're drinking cheap wine and we have all this art here, and he's like, man, who's the artist? And I was like, oh, that's me. And he was like, man, this is good stuff, man. It's real good stuff. He's like, I'd like to own some of this. And I was like, well, it's for sale. I mean, you can, you can buy it. So the night goes on, and, and then he comes up to me, and he's like, hey, um, you serious about selling this stuff? And I said, yeah, every bit of it. And he was like, how much do you want for all of this? I mean, I try to be real professional. I was like, uh, yeah, let me let me let me count them up, and I'll, I'll get back to you. Let me go. Let me go see what I got. I, I took my girlfriend at the time. I took her in the restroom. I was like, "This dude wants to buy every bit of this art," and she was like, "What?" And I was like, "How much are we behind?" She was like, "Well, the the rent's so and so, and the car payment's so and so," and she added up all this in her head. So I got there, and I was like, "I got myself together." And he's like a doctor. I was like, uh, nine hundred bucks for all this," and he was like, "All right, well." Let me think about it. And, and I thought, oh, it's like, oh, dang, like, he's not going to get it. And he goes, all right, well, 
let me let me give you 600 bucks now and I'll, I'll if you don't mind i'll come back and give you the other three 30 minutes later he's knocking on my door everybody had already left my house he knocks on my door and he's like here's another 300 and i was like Shit, man i'm gonna help you load it up and i helped him load it up and i brought home a 900 dollar i mean cash money and we paid for my rent paid for a car and since that day and strike me dead if I'm lying I've never looked back and we've never been in that position again ever ever we've never been in that position again thank God I always knew that one day I would be selling my art um, I always knew that that I was gonna be somebody um, I'm still not where I want to be but I know I'll be there you know I've had people bash my work I've had people bash you know whatever it is that I'm doing I never let that get me down and uh, I just continued doing what I do, continued to be myself, and here I am today still doing what I knew I would be doing.